So the next time you update your GoPro app, you'll probably notice it's not called GoPro anymore. It's called GoPro Quick. And I'm going to try to explain this whole thing. And I'm not going to lie, it's a little confusing. Sometimes a lot confusing, but I don't think it's bad, just confusing. So about four years ago, GoPro announced Quick. And the whole idea behind Quick is it would take all your GoPro footage, spit it into an app, and then on the other side, it would spit out a short, like 30 to 70 or so second video, time to music, and all the highlights. And it used a lot of cool, like computer stuff to figure out what the highlights were. So it figured out that smiles meant that was something maybe exciting versus you just standing there waiting for action to happen. It looked at accelerometer data to figure out jumps. And it was pretty cool. And you know, for the most part, it did a decent job, not like, high quality YouTube editor job, but like good enough for most people. And then GoPro killed it. Well, they didn't really kill it. They basically killed off the app, merged into the main GoPro app, where it pretty much got no love for a while. The problem with Quick in the early days, though, is that it wasn't great with content outside of GoPro. Uh, and so, like, let's take a typical ski trip, for example. So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out in the ski hill, I'm gonna shoot all my, like, skiing footage in a GoPro, I'm gonna shoot my, you know, cool aerial footage on a drone that's definitely not GoPro, because rest in peace, karma. Then we get to the ski lodge at lunch. I'm going to shoot some like pretty photos of like food and stuff like that on my phone. And then, you know, like late night shenanigans also at the hotel on a phone, right? So not all of it's GoPro. So then like a while back, GoPro allowed you to start importing that content into Quick. And that technically worked, but it wasn't super obvious for a lot of people. And not only that, with the naming GoPro as a title, people that didn't have a GoPro weren't thinking about using Quick because they didn't have a GoPro. So the main point behind today's announcement is that GoPro is offering Quick for people that don't have a GoPro. They're marketing that way, that's why they're renaming the app, and that's why they're gonna charge you money for it. Because of course they are. But they're not gonna charge you if you already have a GoPro and already have GoPro Plus. So let me kind of step back and explain that. So basically, there's gonna be two levels. If you have the GoPro Plus, now called GoPro Subscriber, uh, then you get all this stuff included for free. If you don't have that though, um, then you have to pay basically 10 bucks a year or two bucks a month if you pay it monthly which to me is pretty reasonable for what it delivers compared to what other video editing apps tend to cost. So that's fair. And as far as being a GoPro subscriber, if you bought or have a Hero 9, then you probably have GoPro subscription, GoPro Plus, whatever the heck it's called these days, because otherwise you paid like a hundred bucks too much. Because if you buy Hero 9 with GoPro Plus, you get hundred bucks off. And then from there on out, you get 50% off accessories and all these other things that backs up all your stuff to the cloud. I use it mainly because I get 50% off accessories, but also because I use it as like my backup for everything else. So all my footage just goes to the cloud. I don't have to think about it. Also, if I kill GoPro cameras, they'll replace them. And yeah, there's lots of stuff there. It's their marketing thing to sell, not mine. Meanwhile, for all the rest of us that are GoPro subscribers, already have the Quick app, what do you get today? Basically four new things. One, there's a new speed ramp tool. Two, there's new video filters. Three, there's new music. Uh, and then four, there's a semi-new, but not entirely new mural concept that attempts maybe sort of kind of to tie all this together. So I'm just gonna simply show this to you on my phone with my own stuff from the last couple of weeks because it seems to make the most sense. So when you open up the GoPro app now, uh, as it's been the case the last couple of months, you're brought to what's called your mural. The whole idea here is that your mural is like your private Instagram wall that only you see. Uh, and in talking to GoPro about it, they wanted to make it something that you can put your stuff there that you're not like judged by it for how cool it is. Though so this shot is, is pretty cool. Versus like if you put something on Instagram or Facebook or Tumblr or MySpace or whatever the case is, you're judged for that. That's that's the game. That's the name of the game. It is what it is. Uh, so this is only something that you see. And then in theory, you take all of your content from your phone and put it in. So I would go to my gallery right there. And you see at the top, I have the apps. That's the things that are in my GoPro app. I have the GoPro Cloud. This is GoPro footage because GoPro footage goes to the cloud. So they're saying by the end of the year, anything you pull into the GoPro app will also syncs the cloud uh, unlimited, which is Pretty interesting if you think about that for a second. Uh, then I've got my phone, so it pulls up all my phone stuff there. Uh, so photos I took this morning, for example. Uh, and then I've got edits, which are these edited videos that I've pulled together. Uh, and now keep in mind, mural is designed to be like this wall that you stick things on um, versus edits are completed video. Now the theory here is that the mural automatically updates the feature video, which basically makes its own automatic quick video based on the content in that particular mural set. So you can have multiple mural sets for different topics like this, or maybe different people. The idea being that you could have like one for one of your kids and so on over time, add photos over years to it, and it keeps on making this kind of forever updated video. Sort of similar to what your phone probably already does, 
but in theory, better. Instead, to make a video, what you gotta do is go back to your gallery, choose a bunch of photos, uh, and then you make an edit. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the app side here, and I'm gonna select these ones right here from that Sunday, because that was all uh, mountain biking with the kids, simple enough. Uh, and then at the bottom, you see there's a mural option. This is the one right there, that little uh, dot, dot, dot with the arrow to the left. And in the middle left, there's the option to go ahead and make a video of it. So I'll tap that and it's gonna open up what is basically the quick side of it. Uh, you can see, give it a couple seconds, and it's gonna spit out a video here that takes all those clips, there we go, my edit, uh, and puts some music together. Ironically, of the Insta360 uh, go to there. And again, this is just a straight up quick little edit that I did. My kids are like three years old. They're not going terribly fast and doing amazing like tricks or anything like that. Uh, so you can see it's putting together. It's not perfect, but this isn't too shabby. Like. It works. I mean, for if I was not like a person who does videos for a living, then I might just take this as is, send it to the grandparents, and be done with it. Oh, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or all that junk, go ahead and like that subscribe button at the bottom there for plenty more sports technology goodness. So let's talk about those couple of new things. First off with the speed ramp tool. Um, so I'm gonna choose this clip right here of my daughter that will fly by in just a second. Uh, and I'm gonna click the little pencil icon. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and choose the speed option. Uh, and I'm gonna scroll to the point of the video where my second daughter goes by, because it's a little bit faster. Uh, so you can see here's the real-time playback right there, cruising down with a baby on top, and then boom, she's gone, right? Simple enough. So I'm going to go back here to this moment right there, and I'm going to slow that down. The way I do that is I tap this plus, and then I drag this off the side. Tap the plus, drag it. Sorry, it's hard to do this with my finger not covering it. There we go. Until uh, she passes, and then hit the check marks, and I can see it went to half speed right there. Uh, and you'll see now if we go back and play this right there, what's going to happen? She cruises down, and then boom, it slows it down right there as she goes past. Uh, now, in theory, if you had like a much cooler clip of you know doing like a backflip off a jump and you were filming 120 frames per second, you can go ahead and take that uh, and really slow it down for just that time slice, which previously wasn't there in the past. Okay, swinging back down to a couple new features, there is the new filter options or more filters. So you can see these are now categorized by style, greenery, beach, water, snow. Uh, so I can say greenery, there we go, this one right here. And you can see that makes it much more green, probably way too green, I'll pull this back a little bit. Uh, and again, filters are like a personal preference thing. So some of these are hideous and some of them are great. Depends on what you're looking for on that given day or given mood. Next, heading back into the app, there's the music portions that are new um, or updated. Now these are all royalty free tracks, which I know for a lot of people are like, ah, I don't really care about that. But if you're posting something to YouTube or to some other social media platform, you want to make sure you have royalty free tracks so you don't get dinged. Uh, and sometimes dinged means you can't monetize it, can't make money on it, which again, might not matter for a lot of people, but then other times ding means they remove your content. So by having this audio that's already pre like uh, approved for usage, you don't have to worry about it. And you can see all the tracks that are off there by clicking the plus icon. Uh, and you can look at all these right here. There's a fair number of them uh, by different themes and stuff like that. Uh, and then you can go to load more to see more in that particular category. And then also go into my music then to add music that you have on your phone. And of course, the whole point of this, you can go do these clips and you can add clips and tweak the length, the duration, remove clips, add titles, uh, and change each portion of that. You can also change the entire length of the whole automated uh, movie by itself. So for example, let's say I don't want it to be this long. I want it to be uh, Instagram focused at 30 seconds. Um, it'll just automatically condense everything down to the 30 second clip, or I can go out to a much longer clip here, which is all the way up to one minute, 54 seconds, apparently for this set of uh, stuff. Um, but it does, again, a pretty good job of condensing it all down into the main snippets there. Uh, and if you can tweak what you want from that. So if I like this particular step, but want to tweak a few things, like maybe her crash there wasn't quite ideal, I can go ahead down into that and remove that. So uh, here you can see she's got, it's got the faster section of her going through there, uh, this little section of the camera moving around, uh, because again, it's looking at sort of the movement of the camera itself. Now, one minor downside that I want to point out here, because I think it's important, uh, is that in the last few months, as part of like GoPro's under the hood retooling, of the GoPro app, uh, partially I think a preparation for some of this stuff, they yanked away the ability for you to change ProTune options uh, within the GoPro app to a camera that's remotely mounted somewhere. So if I had a camera on the ceiling right there, uh, as I actually often do in here, doing different uh, shooting and stuff like that, I can't change the ProTune settings up there. And that's particularly annoying for me uh, because ProTune settings are things like a color balance uh, and exposure and all the stuff that I want to match the studio lighting I've in here. The same goes for other scenarios like maybe at night and stuff like that, where you want to tweak those settings. GoPro removed that across the board for all their cameras from the app itself. You can still do it on the camera if you need to, um, or using GoPro's Labs QR codes. If you like hold a QR code up there and 
No, nobody wants to do that. I asked GoPro about this, and they said like they couldn't talk about future plans, which I get, but that also kind of worries me. Like, are they implying that maybe they'll bring it back, but it'll cost money or be a new product or? I don't know, but I just know it's a little annoying. So this is my like way to apply some more pressure to get that fixed. So there you go, a quick look at quick. See what I did there? Dad jokes for you. Um, anyways, if you found this interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Uh, there is gonna be more sports technology goodness. That's for sure. I've got a, a drone like action bike sort of video coming up. I think maybe this week sometime, probably Friday or so that I shot. Uh, in fact, you could see it in my little quick. I even shot some of the stuff on quick. In fact, a lot of stuff that I've been doing lately for both DJI products as well as uh, Insta360 products, I've actually used the quick app to make the Instagram trailers for that on my Instagram account. If you don't happen to follow me there, you can do that as well. Anyways, with that, have a good one. Thanks for watching.